Hi, my name's Ryan from Sourcegraph, and this video is about giving you a good head start in learning how to use Sourcegraph and what it's all about. To kind of take you around the, the interface here, here we can see what I call uh, search scopes. So how Sourcegraph is different to other tools is that you don't necessarily put in your search query and then expect to find uh, what you're looking for. Often code search is more like code discovery. And so you can use these things called search scopes to quickly narrow it down based perhaps on the language, uh, or you might want to, uh, in this case with Golang, you might want to exclude uh, files or results that are in a vendor directory. So we'll head back to the homepage now. So uh, what you can see here too, is that there is two ways really you can build your query. One is to use plain text mode, and that is uh, by hitting control spacebar here, I can get a list of all of the filters and I can simply build up my filter, uh, my search query, I should say. So I'll say TypeScript and I'll use change set as well. So this works really, this works really well. Um, when starting out, I think another good way is to use the interactive mode. Now this is going to help you build your search query bit by bit and is a little bit easier because you've always got this sort of like a visual, uh, these buttons here and the drop down to kind of help you out. So if we do the same thing, we'll say language, select TypeScript. And now each time I sort of add a filter, uh, this is going to uh, give me a new set of results. So now I'm gonna say I want TypeScript and I'm going to search for all instances of change set. Okay. Other things that you're used to from your IDE or your editor, we've got case sensitive searches here, regular expressions, and something called structural search, which you likely haven't seen before. Um, I cover regular expressions and structural search in, another, in other videos, and I'll provide a link to those in the video description. Okay, so what I wanna do now is take you through how we might do some code discovery. So I'll head back to the homepage and let's start with just searching for change set as I did before. Okay. So what I've done here on my Sourcegraph demo instance is I have a mixture of uh, Sourcegraph code uh, from the Sourcegraph org and open source as well. Now, sometimes you wanna be searching uh, across every repository in your company, uh, but sometimes you might know the repository that you want to look for. So let's add a repo filter here. And we're going to say that it is from the Sourcegraph repository on GitHub. Now, the reason why that you have to type all of this out is because in enterprise organizations, it's quite common for there to be more than one code host. And so one benefit of Sourcegraph when you do a code search is that it can search across multiple code hosts in every repository. This is why we need to put this github.com prefix in. So I'm gonna say I want the Sourcegraph repository. Also take note that there's a dollar sign here and the caret here as well. So certain filters uh, and the repo filter being one of them accept regular expressions. And so you could also uh, do something, you know, like this as well, which would match anything, uh, Sourcegraph hyphen, and then anything after that. So you can do lots of interesting things here. For us, we're gonna keep it simple and we're gonna limit searching just to the Sourcegraph repository. All right, let's now add a language filter because I want to look at change set management in TypeScript code. Okay, what I can also do is that I can add a file filter. Now, this could be used uh, for, in this case, I'm gonna say, I wanna see what code there is that manages change sets that exists in files where campaigns is in the file path. Okay, so, you can kind of see the, the workflow here. I have some sort of you know search term that I want to search for, and they I use the uh, different and powerful filters that Sourcegraph has to go about you know narrowing down the list of results until I can start uh, you know clicking around and navigating. So if I click into this file here, what's really cool is that Sourcegraph has you know, the same code navigation, same code intelligence capabilities as your editor. And so if I, for instance, wanted to see uh, jump to the definition of this change set form. I can do that here. I can stay completely in source graph. I don't need to check out this code locally and then have that index and use the code intelligence there. And then I can also do things like, well, uh, whereabouts in, uh, you know, this code base or perhaps other code bases is the add change set form used. 
and then I can scroll down here to get a list of those. So this is a really, really quick, uh, you know, a demo of, of some of the, the functionality that we've got going on here. Let me show you, you a few more things. Here you'll see some buttons like blame. Um, this comes from what is called source graph extensions. And source graph extensions uh, essentially allow uh, custom code that could be contributed by the community uh, or by uh, your, you know, yourself or your, your company to add capabilities uh, to code. And so what we can see here is if we click this, then we get blame messages next to our code. And this is just one extension. Um, if we go to the uh, main navigation here and then click on extensions, you can see the entire list of extensions. And for instance, if we look at the extensions that exist for the programming languages that Sourcegraph supports, we can see there's an absolute ton here. And it should be should come as no surprise that most of these are enabled by default. So that's extensions. Uh, we also have third-party extensions um, for things like Sentry and Datadog, Lightstep. Um, so tons of great stuff here. All right, so getting back to the demo, showing you an example of how you can uh, you know, create a query and then use filters to narrow that down. One really powerful thing that Sourcegraph does as well is it doesn't, not just able to search for code, but it can also search for code in commit diffs. Now this is super, uh, super useful. If you wanna do something like, you wanna look for change set, but you wanna look for how change set is used in code uh, over time. So if I just jump back here, and if we click on the diffs tab, now we can see uh, commits where change set uh, was, was in a commit diff. So this is really cool. We can also search for the same thing, but in commit messages as well. Uh, we could also search for symbols uh, that have change set in, in, their, in their name. So this is a great kind of introduction to lots of things that Sourcegraph can do. Uh, I do briefly just want to mention settings. So settings uh, is a way to customize the functionality uh, of, of Sourcegraph for you. It can also control uh, settings for an organization or at the global level as well. So this is these are the settings that are just for me, so it'll only affect my user. Um, if for instance, we wanted to add a link, uh, a quick link to the homepage here, I can do this and I'll just add a real quick one. Right, quick link. Just for an example, we'll have this go to sourcegraph.com. So if we save that and then go back to the home page, we'll see now that I have this quick link here. We could have also added a custom search scope. And what's really cool is that settings are, they're merged. And so anything uh, from the, the global to the organization to your user, it was going to merge all of these links for you. Something else that uh, I should have shown you before too is the ability to save a search. So if I just jump back in history here to get back to my search, what I can do is I can save this search query. Now, also I can save this at the user level. If I was part of an organization, I can save it at that level as well. And so I can give it a brief description Okay, and what's what's really cool is that if I change this to a diff search, then I can actually receive an email notification about this. So this is really cool if there is code that you wanna monitor for changes. Uh, a really good use case of this is you may wanna ma uh, monitor a package.json file uh, in case someone's changing dependencies or they're changing a version of a dependency, uh, getting updated when things like that happen uh, could be a potentially dangerous, uh, interesting operation for your app, uh, that could be a great use of notifications. Otherwise, uh, if I just take this out for now, and then I 
this. Then I will be able to get back to this by going to settings, clicking here, and now I've got this search working again. So now you've got an idea about how to get started with Sourcegraph. And you've also learned about how Sourcegraph can do things that your editor and your code host search can't do, such as commit div search and searching in commit messages as well. I hope you found the video useful and I'd love to get your feedback and happy searching.